Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. And we've got a machine on display today that we haven't seen in quite some time. It's the American Tier 8 non-turreted tank destroyer, the T-28. It's a standard Tier 8 battle here on the Fisherman's Bay map. And playing the T-28 for us, it's that young whippersnapper Dave again. <laughs> He's, uh, he gets around a bit, doesn't he? He seems to like playing all kinds of different vehicles, Dave. You can never predict what we're going to see him in next. Oh yes, young Dave. All of you OG salt miners know who I'm talking about. Everybody else has just no idea. <laughs> What's this old man waffling on about now? His name's not Dave. Trust us, it is. So, Dave in the T-28. Um... I'm sure many of you are probably aware of this, but I'm equally sure that many of you are not. Because the T-28 is actually in the game twice. Once at Tier 8, here, where it's called the T-28, and once at Tier 9, where it's called the T-95, affectionately known as the Doom Turtle. You see, the T-95 is a T-28, just with some extra tracks fitted, and some spaced armour fitted over the sides to cover those tracks. I suppose it kind of makes sense, rather than doing what they've done with other tanks, for example, um, and giving them upgraded turrets and guns and so on and so on in the same tank. For this, they pretty much had to make a new model, so it kind of made sense to call the T-95 a completely new machine and sit it at Tier 9, where it does get the option of a much, much bigger gun, uh, something that the T-28 does not. I mean, it gets a pretty big gun anyway, a 120mm gun, which does around about 400 average damage, and has a pretty good rate of fire, giving the T-28 some fairly impressive damage per minute. The 120mm gun also has extremely good penetration for a Tier 8. Oh, stop to take a snapshot there at enemy vehicles on the hill, and a German Tier 6 medium decided to fire back at a T-28. I was very optimistic of. But yes, 248mm of penetration with the armour-piercing shells in this machine. You get 297mm of penetration with the gold, but you don't really need it, even if you get into a tier 10 battle. Or you never used to need it, even if you got into a tier 10 battle, until Wargaming introduced Japanese Super Heavies. Got to keep those gold sales going, hey Wargaming? Dave is just going for it here. Something that the T-28, particularly when it's top tier, is very, very good at doing. It's got tough armour, but it did have a couple of weak spots and armour holes until the tank was given an HD model rework, which makes it a lot tougher. And he's asking his team for backup, and initially I thought he was probably going to have to do this all by himself. Because that's what tends to happen when you charge forward and ask your team for backup, but to their credit, the team are going for it. And this poor IS-2, who might have had a chance if he'd been able to get out from behind that corner and out onto Dave's flank, can't do that because Dave's been backed up by... A friendly T-29. Enemy T-29 next. Or possibly the enemy IS. No, enemy T-29. Who might have had a chance of doing some damage here. If he'd been able to get in close and face over and shoot down into the top of the T-28. But he didn't. He tried to take cover behind the wreck of the IS-2. That didn't work out too well for him. Enemy IS in full retreat is probably not going to get out of here alive because to their credit, Dave's teammates are swarming forward, backing him up and just tearing these enemy heavies apart. Bit of, uh, not too surprising, rough butt sex there for the enemy IS. Can Dave get the kill? Oh, I think he might. Yeah, there's his first kill, at last. Meanwhile, over on the north-western end of the map, things are not going too well uh, for the rest of Dave's team. In fact, they're having done to them what Dave's team have just done, and are about to conclude doing to the enemy team down on this end of the map. Now, to his credit, the friendly Super Pershing has noticed the collapse of the team on the western flank well in advance, as Dave gets his second kill there, and he is rushing back to occupy a defensive position. Dave's third kill, yet another enemy T-29. Unfortunately for that T26E4 Super Pershing, well, they say no good deed goes unpunished. The fact that he did recognise early enough to be able to do something about it, uh, the threat on the western flank to the base, and nobody else did, 
means that he was in time to get back into... Ooh, that was another another good shot, but a low damage roll that wasn't quite enough to finish off an enemy tank, so somebody else had to get the kill. But yes, the Super Pershing, unfortunately for him, was able to recognise the threat early enough to get back across the field and into a defensive position early enough that he didn't get shot up in the flank on the way. Unfortunately, because he recognised the threat way earlier than anybody else on the mid-ridge, none of them can now make it back to help him without getting shot up in the flank on the way. Oh, nice kill, sir. Which means that the only backup the Super Persian can expect will be from the friendly tanks shooting from the midline. And if the enemy tanks have any sense whatsoever, all they have to do is stay in the low ground on the far side of the western ridge, and nobody will be able to shoot at them except the Super Pershing itself. So he is now pretty much fighting at least four enemy tanks all by himself. Dave, however, right now, is about to find out that he has other problems. There's the enemy TS-5, emptying his pockets at him, which is kind of amusing because Dave is firing regular ammo back, which has exactly the same penetration as the regular ammo fired by the TS-5, and he's penning the front of the equally heavily armoured TS-5 with every shot he fires, and the TS-5 is emptying his pockets at Dave as quickly as he can process his credit card, <laughs> and, and with the exception of the first shot, has achieved absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, Dave is still spotted, and an enemy Scorpion G, with a single shot of regular ammo, which actually has less penetration than the TS-5's regular ammo, managed to do more damage in one shot to Dave than the TS-5 managed with three shots of gold. And I think that's hilarious. <laughs> gold ammunition. The practical alternative to skill. Except it isn't. Skill wins every time. Meanwhile, as predicted, the poor old Super Pershing has managed to die after getting surrounded by four enemy tanks. The surprising thing is that they killed that Super Pershing at exactly the same point where Dave took his first hit from that TS-5, but in all of that time, not one of them thought it might be a good idea to start capping. The same cannot be said for Dave's team, which of course is what's prompting this Scorpion G to give up his concealed position and commit to this suicide rush across open ground in order to try to get the cap reset off, because, I mean, what choice does he have? He's going to lose unless somebody gets that reset. Which seems like a bit of a shame for the Scorpion G, because he was on five kills and seems like a pretty good player. Here comes the Centurion 5-1, who does manage to get the reset off, but it all seems to be a case of just too little too late, as they're coming back in dribs and drabs, while none of the other tanks on the team appear to be concerned about trying to counter cap. The enemy team could have won by now, if they'd just gotten two tanks into the cap circle as soon as they could. They this game would already have been over, but one dead Centurion, congratulations on the Top Gun Dave, there's the T25AT, and no idea what the E25 or what the T34-100 were doing, but whatever it was, it didn't appear to be very useful. Either way, good game for Dave, in a machine that we don't see very often, with his Ace Tanker, Steel Wall, High Calibre and Top Gun. Dave scored exactly 6,000 damage in that match, and 1,550 base experience. Well done also to the two T29s on his team, who joined him in the top three, an extremely creditable performance from a pair of Tier 7 heavies in a Tier 8 battle. I've always maintained that the T29 is the best Tier 7 heavy tank in the game. Even years after it was introduced, I still think that tank punches above its weight, even after the Tiger received its uh, reload buff a couple of years ago. Go on, change my mind, I dare you. Commiserations, of course, to the Super Pershing, who might not have been the only person on the team who recognised the threat to the western flank, but he was the only person on the team to do anything about it, uh, which just led to him getting surrounded and overwhelmed by four, possibly five enemy tanks at the same time. Commiserations also to the enemy Centurion Mark V and Rheimatel Borsig, who both played great games on the western flank. Unfortunately, they were forced into suicide runs in an attempt to reset the cap, while the E25 and T34-100 on the team did... Well, I'm not really sure what they did, <laughs> because they certainly weren't trying to counter cap, and they certainly weren't trying to reset. So, whatever they were doing will remain a mystery. Which is great news for Dave, of course, because if they had, uh, this would have been a 6,000 damage Top Gun defeat. But they didn't, so it isn't.
Well done, Dave. Nice to see you back, everyone else. Hope you enjoyed today's battle, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.